Well, Jeff Cohen is with us. Not not to put you in a kind of a second. A second to Senator Sanders ain't bad, but yeah, he, he, I, you would have been with us in in, a, in any other hour, any any way. But uh, Jeff Cohen is the founding director of the Park Center for Independent Media at Ithaca College. He's the author of Cable News Confidential: My Misadventures in Corporate Media, and also uh, relatively famous as the guy who was the producer of Phil Donahue's show back in the day when when it was the number one show on MSNBC. And in 2003, because Phil Donahue was questioning more, he was asking questions about the, the Iraq war. Boing! Off you went. So, Jeff, welcome. It's nice to be with you. It's very unusual for a channel to uh, terminate its most watched program, but MSNBC has done it not just once, twice. What was the second time? Oberman. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, they had, Oberman's not easy to get along with, but uh, they were causing problems for Oberman. He left. Yeah. Someone else who was getting good ratings on MSNBC later was uh, Sank Uyghur, you know, from uh, Young Turks. Yeah. And I think he was too critical of both parties. He wasn't playing, you know, he wasn't doing yeah. blue team over red team. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's very unusual that a channel terminates its uh, top-watched program, and when it does, it's usually pure political censorship, which is what it was when MSNBC terminated Donahue three weeks before the invasion of Iraq. Well, let's, t let's talk about the state of media in the United States and about FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, FAIR.org is the website. And uh, the media has, a, you know, in our lifetime, we're a couple of old farts here. In our lifetime, we've seen some really dramatic changes in media since the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. You want, you want to give yeah. us a, an it's overview? Pr profound changes. While there are more outlets, there's more television channels because of cable, um, a few companies have taken inordinate power over the media. Uh, in the 1970s, there were a lot of cities that had two or three newspapers. It's gone. Um, we do have now hundreds of cable channels, but we have five companies that own most of them. So what we've seen over the decades is a couple trends. One is the media have been concentrated into fewer and fewer hands bigger and bigger corporations, but fewer of them taking over. And the second is, in the mainstream media, the Washington Press Corps, we've got this, cons this uh, development of stars, mm. where the people that are the biggest hosts, the top editors, are very, very cozy with the political and corporate elite. Mm. And one person that personifies it is uh, Bob Woodward. Mm. Uh, when he was a young reporter, he unraveled a conspiracy that brought down President Nixon. Last 10 or 12 years, he's just very cozy with presidents. He doesn't care whether they're Democrats or Republicans. So we've seen this trend where the media have become, the big media, the mainstream media, cozier and cozier with power. I include, by the way, in corporate mainstream media, NPR and PBS, right. which are cozier and cozier with power. And um, I was in MSNBC during the run-up to the invasion of Iraq, which I think is a good uh, case study in the decline of mainstream media. Uh, there was uh, locking out of dissenting voices. People like Phil Donahue were terminated because they were just asking questions. There were mass demonstrations in the streets. Those people didn't get into the studio to pose their issues. It was like uh, it was a uh, like a unison, you know, it was like uh, chant. It was like a drumbeat. Mm -hmm. And if you weren't in that drumbeat for war, you didn't get on the air. And that was the case not just uh, Fox News or MSNBC or CNN or the other networks, the front page of the New York Times, the editorial pages of the Washington Post propelled us. It's a great case study mm -hmm. of the decline. Right. Uh, and another case study is the way they've covered Snowden, the whistleblower, the NSA whistleblower. In mainstream media, the big issue, how do we get him? We, you know, we're supposed to have an independent press. How do we get him? And um, very little coverage of what does the surveillance state mean? How are we being surveilled? Who's profiting from it? Uh, instead of the big questions that the American people need answered, which they get from shows like yours or Amy Goodman, um, in the mainstream media, there's been this obsession on Snowden and whether we capture him and how much damage has he caused? Right. It's uh, it's well, it's been a slow decline. Yeah, there's there's this constant effort to personalize everything and everybody to to and then and then you go after them with with ad hominems. I was 
I was surprised. I haven't been a uh, a guest on a right wing talk show host in a long time on a right wing talk show in a long time, and. Uh, one of these guys down in down in Texas invited me on his show a couple of days ago, and you know, eight thirty in the morning, and uh, started attacking me personally. You know, which I thought was really really weird. It's like I you know I debate conservatives every day. I mean, we're, we've got two debates coming up today. I mean, Neil McCabe is going to be with us, and, and Hayes Brown, and we're going to be talking about you know, is the does the media have a double standard on racism, and should seventeen year olds be able to buy guns? And I've never. You know, in, in 10 years of doing this show, I don't think I've ever called somebody an idiot or, or questioned their parentage or their education or anything. I mean, you don't have to if, you, if you're going to talk about the... But, and so the Snowden thing, I think, is a, is a dimension of that let's, you know, hyper-personalization of everything. And it's, it's also the star syndrome. One of the questions I... Pardon my going off on a rant here. It's, a, it's what I do for a living. Um, one of the questions that I had about this is that you mentioned NPR. In the corporate media, when people hit the point where they've got a major show on corporate media, they're pulling down millions of dollars in income, in annual income, for that individual. That's, to the best of my knowledge, not the case on NPR. Yeah, or I is think it? The people at the top, the people that have been on the air there for some decades, are doing pretty well. Uh -huh. um, it's nothing close to what you can get in mainstream television news, right. but they're doing pretty well. So, but, but is, so are they, I mean, I, I can see somebody who's got a $5 million a year salary wanting to protect right. that by being nice to John McCain and not wanting him to oh, refuse think, yeah. to show up I again. think NPR has been, and public TV, they've been so under the gun from right-wing pressure and paranoia for so many years that they keep getting more and more timid and conservative to prove that they're not liberal. Right. I mean, uh, NPR is the master of the bipartisan consensus. I remember during the first debate about health care reform uh, during the Clintons, where they would always put on the air a Democratic Congress member, former, and a former Republican Congress member, is Vin Weber and a guy named Downing. And they, wouldn't, they didn't tell the audience that both members, former members of Congress, were now lobbyists for the corporate health care industry. Right. And until FAIR raised a stink, and it's what they do over at FAIR, FAIR.org, um, NPR wouldn't even identify these two former Congress members as, as lobbyists. lobbyists. So I think just NPR has become, they're at the national news level, there's some great shows, but at right. the national news level, um, they're so wedded to the bipartisan consensus where they pretend that they're out on the 50-yard line. But if the Democratic corporate leadership, the, the conservative uh, leadership of the Republicans and the sort of corporate centrist leadership of the Democrats, if they're having a debate that's more like between the 10 and the 15 yard lines over on the right side of the field, and that's all NPR tells you is the leaders of the two parties, which they do often, yeah. then they're distorting reality. Yeah, it, It's just, it's so, uh, so I just think they're wedded to power, they're wedded to government power, they're wedded to elite points of view. We, FAIR does a study every year which think tanks get quoted and which think tanks don't. It tends to be the big corporate funded conservative and libertarian think tanks that get on the air the most. Absolutely. We'll, con we'll continue this conversation in just a moment with Jeff Cohen of FAIR.org. This is the Tom Fair Hartman Fair. Program. Founder of FAIR.org, currently teaching at Ithaca College. We'll be right back. <laughs> 